All right, Sandra, a judge has just granted Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis a temporary stay in her fight to avoid being deposed in her alleged lover Nathan Wade's divorce case. Wade, of course, is the special prosecutor that Willis tapped to oversee the Trump case, and the two traveled together. Calls continue for both Willis and Wade to recuse themselves from prosecuting former President Trump and his 18 co-defendants, with some of those charged calling for the case to be thrown out entirely. One of those people is the former president. Let's bring in Jonathan Turley, George Washington University law professor and a Fox News contributor. So, Jonathan, she is not out of the woods yet in terms of this subpoena to be deposed in the Jocelyn Wade, Nathan Wade divorce case. The judge today ruled that he wants to wait for an evidentiary hearing to take place on January the 31st into the Nathan Wade divorce case. And then he'll make a decision. Which way do you think this is going to go? Well, I think this is a logical decision by the court. He's just basically <clears throat> freezing the action until he gets all the evidence in front of him. Uh, but the damage is already done for Willis. And in many ways, she's really magnifying that damage uh, with her move. She filed uh, a, a motion before the court mm -hmm that attacked the estranged wife of her alleged lover as an adulterer and a political conspirator. It was the worst possible tact that she could have taken. I mean, she could have just said, I'm not relevant. It could, she could have said, a deposition is not needed. And instead, she did this full-on attack. And that only raises further questions. I mean, the, the, you have the original decision that she made, which, in my view, was deeply unethical uh, in hiring someone mm -hmm. that she had an alleged intimate relationship with. But she compounded that afterwards uh, in, in her response. It's clear that Mr. Wade and Willis herself are undermining the case for her office. And so she's putting their interests ahead of the office. That's the very thing that conflict of interest rules are meant to avoid. So, so I had a look at the motion uh, that she filed with the court. Uh, she does, at a couple of points in the motion, say that she is not relevant to the divorce case because she alleges it was an affair that Jocelyn Wade had with one of Nathan Wade's friends that irretrievably broke the marriage. But she also says, to your point, that Jocelyn Wade is part of a conspiracy with the Trump organization to go after her, and they're using discovery as a vehicle to harass her. Now, when you take a look at it, at the Big Bethel AME Church the other Sunday, she claimed this was all about racism. Now she's saying it's a big Trump conspiracy. So, so which is it? Right. And my point is that she should have just ended where she began in that motion and just say, I'm not relevant. I'll do what you ask me to do. But what I have to share is not going to be material to the outcome of this case. Hmm. And instead, she went to this conspiratorial argument and she's called anyone raising these questions racist. Well, there are experts on both the left and the right who've said that she and Wade should recuse themselves. And in many ways, it's ironic, right? She accused Trump of not listening to the legal experts about the law and the election, uh, she's doing the same thing. I mean, the, you have an overwhelming view that this conflict of interest is undermining the case. Whenever that view comes to the forefront, a pro most prosecutors would say, all right, I need to take myself out of this equation to protect the interest of my office. Instead, she's calling everyone racists and political conspirators, which is not helping her case. <laughs> So, so the judge has ordered that the record in the divorce case can be unsealed. And we know that Jocelyn Wade, Nathan Wade's estranged wife, has submitted in her file into the court bank records which show Nathan Wade bought plane tickets for both him and Fonnie Willis to various locations. Now, I don't know if she's putting that in there to say that this was a torrid affair that was going on for a long, long time. But the fact that this money is being used that is being paid to Nathan Wade by Fulton County for his services is being used to buy plane tickets for getaways. What does that suggest? 
Well, it, whatever it suggests, it's not good, is it? I mean, the thing is, uh, this is fairly common in a divorce proceeding for w one of the parties to say that the other party has been using money in ways that are sort of deleting the account or, 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 re or removing value from a uh, common property. Uh, in this case, the other woman just happens to be the district attorney. Mm -hmm. But for Willis, it's a much more serious problem. The Department of Justice has prosecuted people who've accepted airplane tickets as alleged kickbacks. Now, I think she'll say, look, this was just a personal relationship. But she's got more questions to answer, and she's not doing it by calling people racists and conspirators. So, real, real quick, uh, supporters of Willis say that Wade should step away, but that she should stay on the case. But she's the one who's in charge. If anybody steps away from the case, shouldn't it be her? Yeah, I, look, at the end, I think I'm skeptical that they're going to terminate the case, that the judge is going to throw the case out. She might be able to get away with removing Wade, but this still remains an office under her direction. And the question is how much damage she has done and she is doing with, with this campaign of hers uh, to try to retain control. All right. Jonathan Turley for us, our learned professor of all things legal. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.